Hi everybody, in today's beauty roundup, I'll be sharing with you guys my best and worst luxury foundations of 2023. So if you guys are interested, do stick around. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Christina. I do product reviews on luxury beauty, skincare, and makeup. Occasionally, I might share a luxury accessory review or a vlog here and there. So today, you guys, I am very excited to share my foundation roundup. This is my favorite beauty category because I just love perfecting skin. And I think once you have that down, you have about 70% of your look kind of sealed. So I'm going to be sharing things that I've loved and a few that I also didn't love so much this year. Okay, so before I begin, I just want to share a few basics with you guys, specifically my skin type and also my skin tone, just for reference when I discuss these foundations. So my skin type is True Combination, which gets quite oily in the T-zone during the summer, but in the winter can get dry and sensitive. And in terms of my skin tone and the shade ranges I usually have in terms of basic, brands i am a light to medium skin tone with a yellow undertone and for mac as reference i'm an nc30 that's my best shade match and then for dior i'm either a 2n or a 2w so i'm going to begin with a few of the new ones that launched this year and also towards the end i mean i guess from the least to the most so i'm going to begin with also the lightest coverage that I have. This one stood out for me because of finish. This is the Hourglass Hydrating Skin Tint Veil. The shade that I have is number five. And this one, you guys, it's really a tinted moisturizer. That's what it is. I really don't see it giving much coverage actually, but to me, this stood out because of the finish. And when this first launched, I was really gravitating towards this a lot, especially during August and summer. So let me just show you the finish. And I love the texture and the consistency of this. And these, in this video, you guys, I'm not going to be talking about ingredients or any of those because when it comes to foundation, I'm not really looking for key ingredients or ingredient callouts. I do check it once in a while, but to me, it's really more of the finish, the coverage, and the texture of the foundation. And so this is very smooth and it's so lightweight and it looks beautiful when you apply it with your fingers. I also use a beauty blender to still buff it in, but you can see how it looks. It kind of brightens your skin a bit. So for the periphery of my face, or actually for the whole face, I do put this. And then what I do for areas like my chin or if I have any blemishes or the darkness under my eye, what I would do is I would just come in with a, an OG or a Holy Grail concealer and then kind of work that on the center of my face. And the rest of my face, I just have this skin veil or tint and it absolutely looks gorgeous. If your combination though, like myself, I did need to set this, both powder and setting spray I would recommend, but this is very skin-like. Young skin that's untouched or you're in your early 20s, you still have flawless skin, you can skip foundation and just stick to this. The next product is from Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Tint. And this one was a launch this year as well. The shade that I have is number seven, although I find that right now this is really too dark for me so i am gonna swatch this beside the hourglass this one to me has a bit more coverage although it is described as a light coverage light to medium this is so you can see it's a bit more yellow but this to me has just slightly a bit more coverage than the hourglass i Personally, because it has a bit more coverage, enjoyed this so much more. A little more tacky and feels closer to the texture and consistency of a foundation rather than a tinted moisturizer or a, or a tint. But I have to say that in terms of finish, I really enjoy the finish of Danessa Myricks more. If you can see, I guess because it's not as shiny. And during the summer, if your combination skin, it can look like a bit like a disco ball but this one 
tones down in the shine it just has a natural finish that looks like skin without the sheen or the glow but in the summer these two were the ones i reached for the most and i really enjoyed the texture the lightness and the finish of both and i think they both give very skin like finish it's just that one is a bit more has a bit more of a sheen or a glow to it and this one is a bit more natural with a bit more coverage the next foundation this one is now truly a foundation it was one of the most hyped foundation launches of 2023 and this one is from glossier and this is actually the only product that i own from glossier which is a big big deal this is the glossier stretch foundation this is a medium coverage natural finish foundation and what stood out for me the most about this foundation is the word stretch i've never heard that used in terms of a foundation name or description but that is exactly what makes this foundation stand out the most besides the finish that i like and the coverage that i like very little of this you guys the way the pigments are made or the molecules in this foundation you can absolutely stretch this as much as you want and it's just gonna get it's a it's the coverage that just keeps on giving i'm gonna show you guys the shade that i have for this is lights light number five and this was now this one, I don't use my fingers. I will use a brush, but show you guys. Okay, let me just show you guys. Like literally. That small dot will do more than half my hand. I love the finish of this. This is not a shine. This is not a matte. It is like natural. I wouldn't even say satin. This is really a natural in between finish, but you can see how beautiful that looks. The coverage is through medium and this is just a beautiful foundation. I thoroughly enjoy it. It also doesn't leave a film and doesn't really have much weight this is a really good like mid-range luxury foundation so those are the first three now we're gonna go to my top three this year and these are not new launches of this year but these are still foundations that have kept their standing in terms of my favorites my holy grail i think one of them was a carryover it was my number one last year in my roundup and one of them is a rediscovered classic og and she has the number one spot this year so i'm gonna begin with the first one and this is not a new launch this is the nars let me just grab it it's all the way here this is the nars light reflecting foundation the shade that i have in nars is fiji and this one is just such a beautiful medium coverage more towards full without the weight and with a beautiful finish i think from my top three in terms of coverage this one gives the more the most full coverage you just have to be careful with this pump because this pump that's the only thing I'm, i have to say about this this pump like oh it just okay see it just always pumps too much too much this amount you guys is like three-fourths of my face let me show you let me just spread that first this is Fiji first of all the shade match is amazing look at this you guys I also recommend that you use a buffing brush use a beauty blender to just kind of stipple it after but in terms of spreading it on your skin look at this Use a foundation brush. It does blur the skin, and I think that's one of the claims it makes. It is the way the pigments are made. It just gives a very blurring effect, almost like a filter on the skin. During the winter, like now, I don't really need to powder my whole face down. I apply it on my face. It really gives a nice glow to the skin, and it is a true medium, almost looks like a full coverage. I rarely have to put that much concealer when I'm using this 
foundation. And there is no film or tackiness that I feel. This one also doesn't move or budge much. So if you're a combination skin that is such an amazing characteristic of a foundation, the next product or the next foundation was my holy grail last year and this is none other than the Suku liquid foundation. This is a Japanese luxury brand that obviously you can get in Japan but if you're in North America you can order this through Selfridges and they do an amazing two business days delivery. You guys, this to me is this is just a few points, maybe decimal points, than my holy grail number one rediscovered OG foundation. But this is the most beautiful medium coverage, true medium coverage, a little lighter coverage than this one. And the most beautiful my skin but better that I've ever gotten in a foundation. The shade that I have is 25. I already wiped the other foundations, you guys. And I think for color match, this one is not too yellow as well, which I've shared. Like sometimes the color really makes a big difference. Let me just smear that. This is 025. When I tell you how this looks, less yellow than the NARS light reflecting, a little more light reflecting than the NARS. This one has a little more of a glow. But you guys, it still looks like skin. This is a little less weight, a little less coverage. Like it pulls back the NARS a bit. But if I do this, like you can see there, look at this sheen on my skin. And it looks like I have beautiful skin. It doesn't look like I'm wearing foundation. If I want to look really good and I don't want to think about it and I don't want to work so hard, this top two or if I'm going to dinner, I just reach for this too. If I am traveling, I'm, I'm going to have not both but one of these two because they just make my skin look perfect, perfect, perfect. Finally, last but not the least, you guys, if you've watched my channel for a long time now I am sure you've heard me talk about this foundation and this year after almost what 10 years of not touching this foundation because there's just been so much newness so much things that I've fallen in love with and I tried she was really like not even in my collection anymore and during the Sephora VIB sale I was just like I was walking around and I swatched this foundation and I'm like, put some on my skin and I was like, what did I, why did I forget about this foundation? So it is none other than Armani's Luminous Silk Foundation. This foundation is OG because she also was the trailblazer of all now all the light reflecting glow complexion products she started it and the shade that i have is 5.75 i've always had that and it is a very good skin match to me i have it on my skin right now she just makes skin look so good and people that are on tv or newscasters and even celebrities request for this foundation so I'm gonna show you this little spot right here. I'm gonna, this is 5.75. Look at that beautiful shade match. This one also, even if it, there's a yellow undertone, it doesn't pull too yellow. The shade range and the, like it has 5.5, 5.75, 5.25, like every nuance of an undertone or a slight tweak or lightness or darkness, it, has a range that is that detailed so you can literally find your shade almost to an exact match and it's also quite inclusive it has a lot more shades so this is the luminous silk I don't really have to go so thoroughly in this anymore because this is it's described as medium coverage. It's described as having a luminous finish. It has both of that. But I think on top of all that, it's look at the luminosity here, but I don't feel it. It is so lightweight when you buff it in the skin and it immediately 
make skin look perfect without making it look like you're wearing foundation. You can see right here. I think in terms of finish, no one has achieved finish like this. This is not full coverage, of course, but it stays on the skin well, it wears well, it doesn't claim to be too long wearing, it doesn't claim to have all these high falluting skincare ingredients. A lot of premium brands now boast of having hyaluronic acid, you know, having natural ingredients, squalene, and all these hybrids. But this one, it's not trying to be all that. It's just trying to give you the most perfected looking skin, which is what all the foundation, all that a foundation should be doing or all that it really is. But it's giving you the best finish and the best pigment molecules where it's undetectable and you look like you just have beautiful skin. So those are my best foundations of 2023. I'm going to quickly share a few of my disappointing ones. Number one is a terracotta lip tint from Guerlain. I love their powders, their terracotta bronzers, and their meteorites. It's very fragranced as well. It smells like the terracotta bronzer. Essentially, it's the dryness of my skin and texture in the skin. It does feel like foundation. It has a lot more weight. This is full coverage though, so I'm not so sure if it's just the coverage, but I never really reached for this. Next one, which I was so sad about because I it sounded so promising, was the Prada Reveal Foundation. I also don't like how this made my skin look. Unfortunately, I purchased this in Selfridges. So it's not yet available in Canada, so I'm not going to return it. I think there's an option to return, but it's, it's a bit too much work. And plus, it's fine. I'm going to keep it. I also think that the shade that I got is a bit too light. But more than that, even when I first tried it, this one is a bit, it's not as matte or full coverage as the Guerlain. So it's this one right here. But there was nothing to me about this foundation that made me want to reach for it. It didn't make my skin look super bad or as bad as this one made it look so texturized and just parched. But there was nothing about it that I really enjoyed nothing I, I i think after i tried it and i applied it at first it looked good then i reviewed it i think my review was not as negative but i just found that after reviewing it i never wanted to reach for it i went back to my other loved foundations or some of my newer ones but again just Average. It also feels very dry, you guys. The Prada one feels dry. And to me, not just the finish and the texture, but how it feels on the skin, right? Last but not the least, one of the um, not really worse. This is not really worse, but I just feel like it doesn't really do much. And I really never reach for it as well. And I feel like it's just I don't know. It's not really like anything. And then in the middle like two or three hours after you have it on it doesn't look so good anymore but initially when you blend it it looks good it's the LeBeige water fresh tint I did enjoy it for a bit but I think it's just didn't really give much coverage wise or finish wise so that is about it you guys that is my beauty roundup for the best and worst or disappointing luxury foundations of 2023 I hope you guys found that interesting and informative or if you saw any favorites that you also have or have any questions, you can leave it in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a great day or a great evening.